Big thanks to Ren for sponsoring this video. Click the link in the description below to calculate and offset your carbon footprint. Hey everyone, Path here, and welcome to the first episode of Relativity Relatively Quickly, where we look at the basic concepts of the different theories of relativity relatively quickly and concisely. If you enjoy this video and would like to see more from the series, then please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more fun physics content. Let's get into it. So first things first, what is relativity? Well, in a very basic way, relativity is the study of objects moving with respect to each other. Let's imagine we're deep in outer space on a spaceship and an asteroid comes zooming past us. Now, from our perspective, we can say that the asteroid is moving in this direction at some speed v. But from the asteroid's perspective, if it were to have a person on it, it would appear to that person as if the spaceship was moving this way at speed v. So which one of them is technically correct? Well, all the theories of relativity that we will look at tell us that both are correct from their own perspectives. From any given perspective or reference frame, we remain stationary and everything else around us moves. This is even true here on Earth. As we walk along the ground, it is equally valid for us to say that we remain still and the Earth moves beneath our feet. Now, this is a rather complicated example for a few reasons, one of which is that we are so familiar with the idea that we move on Earth that thinking about us being stationary and the Earth moving relative to us is very difficult to wrap our head around. We often think of Earth as the stationary object because we live on it, which makes it convenient in discussing locations with other people relative to the Earth. But the Earth, of course, moves around the Sun, so it's not stationary. And the Sun moves around the center of the galaxy, and many galaxies move around common centers of mass, so they essentially move around each other in galaxy clusters. There is no one unique center around which everything moves, and there is no one most important stationary reference frame. Anyway, this is why it's easier to think of two moving objects in space where there are no other points of reference. From the spaceship's perspective, the spaceship is stationary and the asteroid is moving, and vice versa. Now, a few moments ago, I did indeed say all the theories of relativity that we will look at. In this series, we will be dipping in and out of three different theories of relativity. The first is known as Galilean relativity, worked on by Galileo, and it uses all the physics that we essentially learn in high school, such as Newton's laws of motion and other classical physics. It can be thought of as almost a common sense approach to relativity because based on our experiences in the world, Galilean relativity makes the most intuitive sense. However, our intuitions often deceive us in situations we do not commonly find ourselves in, such as moving at very, very high speeds, way higher than we could go even in the fastest rockets that we have. In those scenarios, the theories of special and general relativity come into play. We'll look at these two in a future video. Now, before we continue, I want to take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, Ren. We've all heard about the climate crisis at this point, and I think that there's something that we can all do to help, whether that's encouraging businesses and governments to take this issue more seriously. And I think that we can all take little steps towards reducing our own carbon footprint, such as walking more rather than driving and eating less meat and making responsible purchases. Now, here's where Ren comes into the picture. Ren is a simple but effective way of making a genuine difference in the climate crisis. Their website, linked down below, allows you to calculate your carbon footprint and then gives you ways to reduce it. You can also make a monthly contribution to offset your footprint by funding diverse carbon reduction projects like tree planting, mineral weathering, and rainforest protection. Ren will then meticulously quantify what impact each project is having and send you monthly updates so you can be sure that your contribution is making a difference. What's interesting to me is that Ren carefully vets what projects they work on so that the money being spent on them by members isn't just making a positive difference in this fight against climate change, but it's making a difference that would have otherwise been impossible. As well as this, like I said before, these projects need to have a measurable impact so we know exactly how much CO2 is offset and that is going to stay out of our atmosphere for a long time. On top of this, REN is a benefit corporation with a legally binding charter. This allows their work to be as transparent as possible. 
So if you'd like to calculate your carbon footprint and find out a little bit more about Wren, then please check out the first link in the description below. It helps the channel out, of course, and the first 100 of you to sign up will get 10 extra free trees planted in your name. A huge thanks once again to Wren. Now let's get back to the video. Let's start here by looking at Galilean relativity and how we commonly study objects that are moving relative to each other. We'll just be looking at motion in a single direction for now. Let's say the x direction. Here's our x axis. So maybe x is equal to zero is here and x is equal to one is here and so on. This is the coordinate system we've chosen. Now we can plot the motion of this object on a graph by showing how it changes over time. We do this by having a time axis or t axis. So at the beginning, at t is equal to zero, if the object we are studying is here, then we can plot its position at the time t is equal to zero. Then at a later time, maybe it moves here. What we're basically plotting is a distance time graph, but with time on this axis and the distance moved on this axis. Usually we do it the other way around, but here it's more convenient to plot x along the horizontal direction, so it matches the actual motion in real space. So just to recap, what we're doing here is seeing how an object moves from our reference frame in which we are stationary. We could, however, also deal with another reference frame. Let's say our friend is moving relative to us in the x direction at a speed v. We can call their axes x primed and t primed to differentiate them from our axes. And remember, from their perspective, they are stationary and we are moving this way with a speed v. So how would they plot the position of this object over time in their reference frame? Well, the easiest way to understand this is to consider the object if it is stationary relative to us, the original observer or the unprimed observer. In other words, in the first reference frame, it looks like this, same position over time. But how does this look in the primed reference frame? Well, at t is equal to zero, both frames coincide, so they agree on the coordinate value of the object. But then one second later, the object appears to be at this position in the primed reference frame. Because remember, the object is actually moving according to the primed reference frame. And if we continue plotting the object's position in the primed reference frame, it looks something like this. What we've just been looking at is the basic diagrammatic way physicists represent an object's motion across different reference frames. We've also seen what is known as standard configuration, which refers to the two reference frames moving relative to each other in the x or x prime direction at a speed v, and their origins are at the same place and time when t is equal to t prime is equal to zero and x is equal to x prime is equal to zero. Any two reference frames moving relative to each other at a constant speed can be described in standard configuration just by redefining what direction our x-axis is and choosing the time t is equal to zero as the time at which the two frames overlap exactly. We'll look at this in more detail in a future episode, as well as some basic mathematical expressions for calculating what an observer would see in the primed reference frame if we know what the unprimed reference frame's observers would see, and vice versa. Now remember, this is all still Galilean relativity, and we haven't yet started looking at the weird space-time warping effects of special and general relativity. All of this will also be covered later on in the series. For now though, if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, then please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more fun physics content. Let me know if there's any particularly confusing ideas from relativity that you'd like me to cover in this series. Also, please check out my merch link down below. It features a quantum dice design based on a famous quote from Einstein. And finally, I'd like to thank all of my Giga patrons as well as all of my other patrons over on my Patreon page. That's linked down below too if you'd like to support me on there. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this short introduction to Galilean relativity and I will see you very soon.